If you don't sleep well, you're in very good company. 70 million Americans suffer from sleep disorders. And what you do about it is very important. So there was a link of a, I'm looking down at my notes, uh, from Sleep Medicine Journal 2021 on sleep associated with dementia. And what they found was that patients, and they followed patients for eight years. This was a very robust study, 6,000 participants, uh, 65 years and older, and what they did was they followed them for eight years and they found that those who routinely use sleep medication, and this wasn't just prescription medication because I've talked about the hazards of the prescription, the sort of heavy duty um, medications, but this was over the counter as well, which made it even more concerning. And what they found that those who routinely used it, so not necessarily every day, but several times a week, they were 30% more likely to develop dementia. Um, dementia is scary no matter how you slice it, but what if you were doing something that was exacerbating or increasing your risk? And these drugs do that. So why would they do that? By the way, the increase in Americans taking sleep meds, it's increased 67% in the last 17 years. And uh, that was what the study followed as well. So why is this? What happens at night? Uh, I always talk to t patients about it's kind of like you leave work and then and then the, the beautiful janitors come in and what do they do? They empty the garbage can, they clean up the mess you made during the day and so it's nicely ready for you the next morning when you come back to work. And that's what your body does. It cleans out cellular debris. You're supposed to be fast asleep. You're not eating, you're not thinking, you're not running around, and your body's designed to, to have the cleanup crew, you know, come at night. That's when your immune cells come out and they, they kill the bad guys and they do all this cleansing. So it's this cleansing, beautiful cleansing of cellular debris that happens when you're in a nice, deep, restorative sleep. What if you have a false sleep? Okay, so the false sleep is that the drug has put you out, but the natural, um, what methodology of your body to clean out the cellular debris that's not happening happening because you're not truly in a deep sleep right this the quote-unquote sleep is just being masked by the drug and so it's it's no surprise to me that we're seeing this link because dementia is linked to sort of is linked to toxicity and it's not just the brain that gets cleansed the whole body does but then we have that beautiful gut gut brain connection uh, and so what we see is that this increased dementia is really associated with the fact that we're not getting deep restorative sleep and we're compounding it with a drug and all drugs have side effects that seems to be exacerbating it because of the drug itself or because it's just masking the fact you're not getting that deep sleep and allowing that cleansing to occur or that that was not definitively figured out by the study it could be a combination of both. The bottom line is, if you're not sleeping well, you're more likely to get dementia. And this is something we want to avoid. So when we work with patients here at Root Cause, we always talk about the two fundamental systems of the body that are associated with good sleep. There's the immune system, which makes total sense based on what I just said, which is that's your immune army comes out at night and, and cleans up the debris, as we mentioned, but also kills cancer cells and bacteria and deals with toxins. It does a great deal for you. So if it's not as robust as it should be, meaning your immune system, then it's not performing that activity as well as it should. And it's really that quality of sleep. So you get into that nice deep sleep and that allows the immune cells to come out. If you're not in a deep sleep, then they're not doing, they're not able to do that job the way they should. The other system we looked at, look at is hormones. So the hormonal system is very associated with getting you into a deep sleep. So we're evaluating those two preferentially when we're looking at why your sleep is not, is not good. There's also sleep hygiene. Sometimes there's just some basic things like, oh, I fall asleep with the TV on, you know, the dog and cat is in my room, and uh, yeah, they disturb me like 85 times a night, you know, so I'm exaggerating, but sleep hygiene, just some basics of wearing a sleep mask and maybe listening, have a sound machine going that, you know, kind of cuts out the ambient noise in your household. There's some basics you can do, and you always want to get those 
in. You know, you don't want to be eating a big meal and then trying to go to sleep so your body's digesting instead of really being able to shut down the way it should. So there's the sleep hygiene steps that are pretty easy. You can do on your own. But if that's not enough, then we're looking at immune system, hormonal systems, and really get you that restorative sleep because there's nothing worse than you can't sleep at night. You just get more and more frustrated, and now we know it's leading to, to dementia. And so uh, I hope this helped, and if your sleep is not the way it should be, and you really find yourself relying on medication, not hard to get off it when we really get to the root cause. And of course, we're delighted to help. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want more on this topic and others, click here.